Well, what do you think about this uh, this background here? You at the beach? I am, in fact, at the beach here. I had a nice background, and then now it didn't. Uh-oh. He's gone. And now your internet doesn't work. He's back. Oh, there he is. <laughs> What's up? I guess he still can't hear us. Johnny's gonna make his big tomahawk explode. Whoa. And then he did. <laughs> yeah. You know what's on the bottom of the foam pit? Cement. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so you don't want to go head first in the goddamn foam pit, especially if it's not been fluffed. All I know was the last time. Excuse me. <laughs> That's what they call it. You heard me. WCW does not recognize Rick Rude's title. It is for the gold belt. However, it's not even the big gold belt. It's no, just it's the gold, the gold belt. belt. Yes. May as well be a gold boat. How could so many of these fuckers not have seen what they had with Steve Austin? It's astonishing. The first set of, and I'm not making this up, this is how they were introduced. Human cage men. <laughs> Excuse me. Human cageman? That is what he said. Hi, Granny. Have you ever ridden a horse? Definitely. I was raised on a farm. What was your horse's name? Nancy. Nancy? Uh-huh. I was not expecting that. I feel like Matt Riddle. We used to do the twist and the polka and the hip-hop and uh, there was one Excuse other me, one the hip-hop? <laughs> yeah, hip-hop. Really? That's what Granny the... did hip-hop. Huh. Yeah. You learn something new every day. No, I don't. Sounds like you're a grandmaster instead I of a grandmother. Brian versus Reigns. That was WrestleMania 6, 1990. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it was not at all. It was SmackDown. It was SmackDown Four days ago. Friday. <laughs> Andre the Giant versus the Iron Sheik. Oh, and the ref was wearing a weird safari outfit. It was a white uh, outfit with a hat and shorts. It was crazy. I think that was the worst match I have ever seen. Andre the Giant, <laughs> really? the Iron Sheik. The <laughs> worst, wow. The worst he, match you've ever seen. Yeah, because the poor Sheik didn't have a chance. I mean, he, and it was so stupid. And I guess his name was Dan Soder or whatever. And they have this little blurb on the bottom. First, I thought it said WWE superstar slash actor. And what it actually says is WWE super fan slash actor you couldn't find people to talk about the macho man randy savage and so you go to random super fan peter rosenblom and then kurt hawkins to talk about the history of his baseball career what tampa is known for strip joints pimps shock jocks sex tapes, macho, Hogan, stuff like that. Great stuff. So they would go all over the place. She would talk about how he had all this ecstasy and they were on yes. all these drugs and they would be on, they'd be all fucked up when they're on television doing these angles on WCW. Which explains and, a lot. Yeah, I just want to put all my time and work into my music, man. Yeah. That's what he wanted to do. Honestly, he seemed happy yes. about what a perfect death this was for the Macho Man Randy Savage. And he's telling the story about a heart attack in a car. He's just being a smile on his face. This guy went on like he was doing a comedy routine for yes. five minutes. Yes. What a jerk. I did not think that Cinco de Mayo would make a difference. Okay? I did not think that. But I have since been given other information. So the fact of the matter is, if everything on TV is down 20% on May 5th, then what that tells you is, despite what I thought, the show was affected by Cinco de Mayo. Yes. Every show is affected by Cinco de Mayo. So if you want to know what AEW likely would have done, and not just AEW, but the challenge... Mm -hmm. Well, everyone, I think we're done with the show tonight. He is no longer going to the moon. He is going to the club. And when they want to come along, he says, guys, there's only room for three. Me, myself, and Cameron Grimes. And he's going to the VIP room, and he leaves. And then uh, Sarai booted her, germined her, and gave her a high-angle suplex for the pin. Uh, for those of you watching on video, I am, in fact, uh, directly over the washing machine. We're not ha. having a massive earthquake and or tsunami over here, so... If it's not one thing, it's another. I'm supposed to. I, I get stressed out every time we come to the beach. Look at this here. Like, there's, what the fuck is going on? Cameron Crimes is left in the street, and there's a zone, uh, a, a drone shot as it flies backwards. The zooming out, and you see tiny little Cameron Grimes getting smaller and smaller, screaming, "Ted DiBiase!" 
Cameron Grimes is awesome. They beat the holy hell out of each other. They did a giant stunt show with a bunch of giant big spots. It was all completely random and meaningless. No, it was not pretty. No, it was not perfect. Yes, they did moves and were right back up. But it was violent carnage, and they gave me what they advertised. And quite frankly, it was better than I expected. The Bucks and the Good Brothers attack, and Omega's out there again, and Cutler is out there again. And I, this was going on so long, it actually reached forward to press the fast forward button, and that's when Omega's music finally hit. So I never actually hit the button, but I was going to. So anyway, they beat Moxley and Kingston up forever, and this feud just goes in circles and nothing actually happens. If you do not watch Elevation, if you do not watch Dark, this storyline literally just started and it's ending next week. Boom! Like that. Next week on Dynamite, there will be a top contenders match between the two highest ranked wrestlers in AEW's rankings, Pac and Orange Cassidy. Yes. Bro, I was more surprised about Pac than Orange Cassidy. Moxley, Jericho, MJF, Hangman Page until last week. And by the way, what the hell was the point of that now? Cage destroys Page, who otherwise would have been in this match for sure. Cage wasn't even on this show. Page wasn't on this show. What is going on with the booking of this company? It's baffling. I realize that rankings are cool in the sense that, you know, people like to keep track of things and they like these things to make sense. And... Again, they make sense numbers-wise, but they don't make sense as a viewer of the television show. There's a way to do war games, and when you do it right, it always works. We get the big five-on-five stare down, and the place is just going nuts, and they all crash into each other like it's an Avengers movie. This is so awesome. They put this commercial at the worst possible time. Like it was a pivotal big change in the match. So the picture in picture is fucking minuscule. It's like little ants. A poster and there's stamp, like yes. A, there's some little guy dressed in white that opened the door. I'm like, who the fuck is that? Like, what is going on here? MJF throws Jericho off the cage through the concrete stage, which it turns out is not actually made of concrete. It is made of cardboard boxes and whatever. And even the cardboard boxes were decorated to look like steel plating. I like to think that was just a decorative touch, not that I was supposed to be fooled into thinking it's steel plating. But uh, yeah, that was overkill. I want everybody to be safe. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me when WWE does it. It doesn't bother me when AEW does it. I would rather it wasn't so obvious, but what the fuck? Shit happens. It's live. What the hell can you do about it? It was not as bad as the bomb not going off. That was a fucking disaster. This was just a bad camera angle. If you hated it, that's fine. If you thought it was stupid, that's fine. By the way, who do you vote for? Tell the people. Oh, yeah, we got to do that, huh? Yeah. AEW is better. I vote I vote AEW. I thought it was I, overall the better I show. I thought NXT was, some... was a better show than last week, but AEW is still a superior this week. 